But uh, how many of you are in my bigger theory class, 3.30? One, two, three? All right, so you'll, you'll recognize the conversation we're, we're going to have. Uh, let's see, do I have a female that's in that class? Two, two, <laughs> are you in there? Come on, come on, help me out here. Uh, so, uh, we just finished, for those of you that aren't in there, we just finished looking at a number of tables on domestic assault. And um, looking at the table of domestic assault, you probably remember uh, the most common form of domestic assault. Uh, again, there's uh, something called the conflict tactics scale uh, that's been administered to uh, thousands of couples around the United States. And when they fill it out, and so when you get in a fight with your husband or wife or your partner, what, what is it you're most likely to do? And the most likely thing that happens in a domestic assault is Remember from the table? <laughs> you will. All right. Who <laughs> <laughs> remembers? Being shoved. Come on. Look at it. So when I come in and I go like this, what we need to have for all of you here shortly is a program response. Now, there's a couple of ways to deal with this. One more. Come on back. All right. Now, you're, you're doing pretty good. I'm hitting you right here. All right. Can you just make one step back and hold your ground? Let's see if you can do that. Make one step back and hold your ground. Great, let's try it again. This time, one more time, step back and hold your ground. Now this time when I get ready to push you, I want you to make a circle with your hands and just push me off that way. Go like this with your hands, great. Got it? All right, here we go. Go like that with your hands, both hands, both hands, both hands and catch me, ready? Here we go again. I'm gonna push, so you better get it right. Step back again, ready, go. Big circle with your hands, push, all right. Now, when you are assaulted like that, gentlemen, she's as likely to do it to you as you are to do it to her. It's really clear in the data. Bitty, bitty chance. There's a 50-50 chance that she will shove you as often as you will shove her. If you will, shove me. Now, you can see that this is a rather non-violent approach. One more time. Give me the shove. All right, shove me again. Please, honey. Now I'm gonna push here. Now at this point, when you do this, your next response is very important. You know what it is? What's your next response? Run. Yeah. Lead, not run. Let's not call it run. Let's call it lead. Okay. Because right after the shove, guess what happens next? You shove me like that, and I don't leave, Next time you reach out at me, I'm gonna hit you. Just like that. Let's find out how that works. Shove me. Shove me again. You see what's gonna happen? All right, gentlemen, she started the fight, but you won it. Guess who goes to jail? The man goes to jail. Uh, this very clear in the data sets, you can argue all day long that she shoved you and hit you first, but because of your counterattack that left her mark, maybe even hurt, you're going to go to jail. One more time, when she shoves you, go ahead, shove me again. I, I'm using a non-violent, a non-violent approach. This is called a soft block. You see my hands are still open. I'm making a little circle. Soft block, as opposed to, shove me again. A heart attack. You know, in, in a personal assault from a stranger or in a bar against somebody my own size, not a loved one, the hard, the hard response is called for. But when, it, when it's an interpersonal problem with a loved one, your brother, your sister, your mom, or your dad, you just don't drop them with what I've taught you. You just don't do it. You can use the soft approach, which means making a circular motion with your block that redirects their energy and gives you the opportunity to walk out. So let's try it one more time. We're gonna shove, shove me, and you'll see I step back, I push, and then I run for the door. Run for the door. Now, there's such a thing as a three minute cooling period. You can get outside and sit down for three minutes. That's all it really takes sometimes, is about three minutes to cool off. And then you can go back and talk. But what happens is your heart rate jumps to 160 during that assault. 
It just plows up just like that. Your heart comes up into your throat. Your adrenaline glands make your knees shake. And what you do is you want to fight back. And you can't fight back against a loved one. You don't. You don't hit back. You leave. You get at least three minutes. And if at the end of three minutes you're still going like this, clear the property, go somewhere else. Don't go drinking. Don't go drinking. And one last thought. Road rage and assaults with the car often happen to individuals who have had a domestic assault. You leave, you get into the car, you're still angry and upset, you're not going to pay attention with the car, and you may redirect your anger toward a person in the other car. Or, if you're like me when I was a teenager, when I got really angry and got behind the wheel of the car, I ran into stuff. Fences, signposts, off the road. <laughs> Shouldn't be in the car if you're angry. So what's that leave you? A nice long walk. All right, so one more time. Let's take a look at what happens. Let's see if after I shove her around a little bit, she can do it. I'm going to reach out and I'm going to pop her on both shoulders. Oh, good. She's not even going to wait. Let's step back. Let's try it again. Step back. Run past me. Run past me. And there you go. One more time. Here we go. One, run past me. On your own, go. 